Greetings! Welcome to another episode for Bobalog of Bobalog. Um, I'm so happy that you're joining me again today while I talk about knitting and all of my other crafty endeavours, but mainly knitting. Uh, my name is Bobby Olan. I am a crafter living here in uh, Victoria, Australia. My partner and I live on the lands of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung peoples, and I would like to pay my respects to them and their elders, past, present, and future, and also uh, extend that respect to all Aboriginal peoples across Australia. I have a lot to get through today, so I'm going to skip the uh, chit chat and just get straight into talking about knitting. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is yesterday I sort of ventured out into the world for the first time in quite a while. Um, I caught up with um, my crochet friend who I've talked about a couple of times before, uh, Hannah. We visited a couple of uh, yarn stores here in Victoria she got a voucher to one of them for Christmas so um, we thought we'd go and see if she could spend that and my intention was to not buy anything because I'm really keen to go to the sheep and wool show in Bendigo for the first time this year. Um, I tried, I, well I bought tickets last year and then it got cancelled at the last minute like it literally got cancelled the day before, I, like lots of vendors had already completely finished setting up their stalls and then it got cancelled which was really sad and we all got um, refunded our ticket prices but I really want to try to go again. This year it's taking place in mid-July, I haven't bought my tickets quite yet but I am planning to go um, so I told myself that I would happily go with her to shop at the stores but I didn't want to buy anything because I am saving up all of my spending for the sheep and wool show to try to find some local goodies and some nice yarns and I'm probably going to make a, li a list of things that I <laughs> want to buy from there but yes I had intended not to buy anything but when we went uh they had a couple of magazines that were on my list to buy. So the first shop that we went to was Maker Maker and they had uh, a small uh, shelf of magazines and my the main knitting magazines that I like to get are the making magazines which I have talked about before. I've shown some of the magazines that I have before but I really like those ones because while their main focus is knitting they do explore other crafts so that's one where I am kind of interested in getting all of the magazines if I can um, but that's yeah that's gonna that's I'm sure that's gonna be a bit hard to do because the past, the, the old ones um, are not in print anymore and it's hard to find shops that still have them in stock, uh, still have the older ones in stock. So I'm kind of all right getting the new ones. But the other problem is that uh, for a few months, just because of all of the shipping difficulties and extra costs that are involved, um, making have actually stopped shipping to Australia. I have no idea actually if they're still shipping wholesale. They probably are because I'm sure that's more affordable than uh, for retail individual purchases, but um, I'm unable to purchase a whole backlog of magazines from them. And all the answers that I, looked up here in Australia that stock making didn't have any of the older issues. So long story short, uh, at Maker Maker, they did have a couple of making uh, issues that I don't already have. So I purchased those. So I got the making, uh, what is this? Making number seven desert and making eight forest. So let me just pop uh, number eight down first. Um, 
So like I said, for the making magazines, I kind of just want them all because I want to just, I just like having them. I like seeing all of the other projects that are in them. Um, and I have, you know, seen them around on Ravelry and stuff, for individual projects. But the main one that I am interested in, uh, in this desert issue is called The Mariposa Jacket by Helga Issiger. And it's that one there. Um, I just really like I'm trying to get that in focus. I just think that's a really interesting texture on that on that um, cardigan there. So I quite like that one. And then another one that I am interested in is this Quality by Paula Pereira. And I think that's just so interesting and pretty. And, you know, most of it is pretty simple, but then it's got that really interesting color or textured panel there that I'd like to make. So they're probably um, the top two patterns in this one that I am interested in. Um, and then, you know, they've got a few other sewing bits and pieces that I think are nice um, and yeah I kind of just like having a flip through these they've got some cooking recipes this one's Mexican stuff salsas and pork carnitas and things like that so I you know I may try other projects that are in here but um, I am mainly a knitter so it is mainly the uh, knitting patterns that I look at in these magazines so that is the desert issue there. In the forest issue, I really, really like this issue. It has a lot of non-knitting things that I'm interested in making, but the main knitting thing that I would like to make is the Haiti Pullover, H-Y-T-T-E. Um, again, by Paula Pereira. I did not realize I must like this designer. But it's that one there. Um, and I I really like um, these circular yoke designs that aren't floral. I'm really drawn to the ones that are leaves or birds or some other kind of no motif that isn't floral. I quite like the geometric ones too, but I think um, this one with the um, it looks like oak leaves to me is is really nice and then i also kind of liked the um where is it the growth rings shawl so it's growth rings um kind of like how trees have you know a ring for each year of their life if you cut them down so it's that one there and i'm kind of surprised that it's one that I like. It's it's pretty, which way am I going? It's pretty simple, but I think it's just really interesting and effective. Um, I'm not sure that I'd ever actually make it because I don't even want to know how many stitches there are in the uh, outer circumference of this. But I don't know, you never know. I, I think it's quite nice and it's really interesting. Um, and like I said, this one has a few other non-knitting things that I'd like to make. Um, uh, at the start of this year, I mentioned that I'm sort of kind of starting to get interested in quilting. So that's one quilt there um, that I might make since I have the pattern for it. Um, and another one that I think is really cool is this... Uh, wood carrier bag. Not sure if and how I'd use it, but I think that's, I think just think that's neat. Um, probably won't make that unless I have a need, but I thought that was pretty cool. So those are the two making magazines that I bought. And then we went to another yarn store called Willaria. Um, both of these are stores that I haven't been to before. Um, my friend Hannah has, 
um, but they're they're kind of in her area. They're not really in my area, so I hadn't visited them before. But again, surprisingly, this one had a magazine that was on my list of magazines that I want to get. So actually only quite recently, I had a look through all of my favorites to see which, um, which patterns are from knitting magazines. And then I made a list of um, the, the magazines, like the issues that they are, especially ones where I had favorited more than one pattern. Uh, Cause I, aside from making, I'm not really interested in just accumulating magazines. I want to know that there are things in them that I want to make. Uh, the trouble with that is um, I, they're all, excuse me one moment. Because I'm looking at them sometime after all of the issues have come out, it's, I, you know, I assumed that it would be quite difficult to find them all. So I think on my list of magazines that I want to get, there are a couple of liner ones. There's one Amorosi issue There's a, and there's a couple of pom-poms. I think, I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. That's on my list of ones that I want to find. And I was really pleased to find that uh, Willarium had one of the pom-pom issues that I want to get. So it is this one here. It is the issue number 32, uh, spring 2020. And I believe that's a design by Hohi Locatelli on the cover. Um, this one, the main pattern that uh the the pattern that was in my favorites and the main one that i am interested in making is called o obeyed by natalia sinel shikova i'm so sorry if i'm mispronouncing that but the link for the patterns with all the designer names and everything will be in the youtube description below as well as on uh, my uh, website where i put transcripts and all of the links to everything that I talk about. Anyway, the Obeyed sweater is this one here. I, let's see, you can kind of see it best in, which way am I going? In that dark version there. I just think that is such a pretty and interesting color work design. Plus, you know, I'm not really, oh, there, you can see that there too. I'm not really like that into pink, which I have said before. But you also just, you know, I mean, that's a close up and it's cropped, so you can't really see the full um, pattern anyway. But I, I've said before, I'm not really into pink. So, um, I mean, who knows what color I'm going to make it into. I kind of, um, I kind of try to resist knitting patterns in the colors that they're presented in. And quite often I also don't use the same yarn just because I'm using what's available to me here in Australia or what I already have in my stash that I think is suitable. So yeah, so really happy to have my first issue of a Pom Pom magazine. So that is, that's that publication right there. Um, so they, they're the only purchases that I made. Uh, my friend Hannah bought some yarn for her crochet projects and um, I stuck with the magazines because as I said, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. Um, as I said, I'm wanting to be able to get a few things from the sheep and will show in July. So just magazines for now. Um, so let's move on to talking about the things that I have been knitting on. Um, to continue on from the previous episode, I'll just close off with mentioning uh, the August Sock Cal by Roxanne Richardson that I have been working on. So that is one of those tutorial recipe type patterns that goes through custom fitting uh, socks for your feet. Um, and so I came up with five variations that I wanted to make using different 
toe constructions, heel constructions, um, and just, yeah, different ways of increasing the stitches or what have you to get the right stitch counts for my partner's feet. So I had also, I've, I've talked about this previously and I don't have them here because I've already gifted them to him. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but aside from all of those different construction methods, I also used uh, different cast on methods for each one. Um, so they are all done now. I managed to get five pairs of ankle socks um, out of three balls of the Wendy Happy yarn, which is a bamboo nylon sock blend. Um, I was saying when I, in previous episodes when I made them, that I was pleasantly surprised at how elastic and springy um, the fabric turned out to be. But once I finished them and I was looking at them all together, I was thinking that I am a bit concerned about how the ribbing on the cuff will actually hold up. I am concerned that that might lose its elasticity fairly quickly, but I guess we'll see. Um, one thing that I didn't mention previously that I kind of just want to touch on um, is the swatching that I did for these. So I have a feeling I must be uh, a somewhat tight knitter. I I never considered myself that way because I always seem to be on gauge for yarns. So I, I'm pretty on gauge for whatever um, tension is listed on the ball band. So I kind of, yeah, I, 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 I never really thought I was much of a tight knitter or a loose knitter. I just thought I was pretty in the middle there. <laughs> um, but anyway, for, for this one, um, I did do a couple of swatches. Part of that was because with all of the vlogs that I've been watching lately, I've been hearing a lot of people say that they often do socks on 2.25 millimeter needles. And I've generally done socks on 2.75 millimeter needles. So I did, I just realized I pulled the cards where I wrote the notes of what, how I worked each swatch out of these two swatches. Um, but I should still be able to tell which is which. Yeah, so, whoopsies, I dropped it. Sorry, this um, swatch here, they're, they're kind of on an angle because I swatched based on a specific sock pattern that I, that I want to do that is kind of done on the bias like that. But you know, the, it, it's, it's stock in that stitch. So it's pretty vanilla except for, you know, the edges where you make it go on the bias. But this one here I had done on 2.25 millimeter needles. And I quite like how firm that is. And it's got, it's still got a bit of give there. And then I did another swatch on 2.75, which like I said, is what I usually use with the same yarn, same stitch counts and everything. And it has quite a bit more stretch to it. So, I I measured these and interestingly enough, they actually give me the same stitch count. So they are both uh, 32 stitches in 10 centimeters. I mean, these aren't quite 10 centimeters long. I think they're just a bit over five, but they would give me that tension of 32 stitches in 10 centimeters. So it's the same, but the one on the bigger needles, I don't know if I can um, get this working, but the one on the, the one on, this is the one on the smaller needles got a bit of stretch but the one on the bigger needles has even more and I did I used the 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 stitch count based on the pattern that that this swatch is for and I slipped both of them over my partner's feet over um over the same I slipped them both over the same foot and because of the extra stretch of this one, 
of the one on the bigger needles uh, it did just fit better this one was just a little too snug so I ended up sticking with the 2.75 millimeter needles when I knit the August sock cowl so I just thought that was interesting um, I would it would be good to um, make socks on the firmer gauge I think but I would wait to do that uh, until I'm using wool yarn again so that's that's the main thing that I sort of wanted to discuss with the August sock cal since I had already discussed them quite a bit in previous episodes the next thing that I want to talk about is the baby lamb pattern by Lorraine Pistorio. So I have talked about these before as well. I had, I think the first time I talked about them was in the previous episode and I had knit, um, these are the two front legs or and ho legs and hooves. I think they're so cute and they've come out so well. And I had started on the hind hooves um, I think I had gotten to about there on each leg and as you can see I have now joined those two and started knitting the bottom. <laughs> so I'm halfway through working uh, the short rows to make the, the bottom. Um, they are done using shadow wrap short rows which I had never done before they're not too I don't find them too bad the main difficulty I have with them is just that because of the nature of this yarn it's just so difficult to see the stitches so sometimes it's just really hard to identify what strand is what um, but other than that I'm really enjoying making these it's also coming out bigger than I had expected it to be so I'm hoping that I have enough yarn because I just bought the one ball which should just be enough based on the meterage so I'm kind of playing yarn chicken with that there so that fluffy yarn is the sheep Yee's, uh, sweetheart soft brush in color 532 and that's a hundred percent polyester and I'm knitting that one at quite a tight gauge just to make sure uh, none of the stuffing is going to fall out. And then the hooves are done in Shape Yee's Soft Fun, which is the crepe colorway. Yeah, and I'm really pleased with how those are turning out. I am using uh, yarn scraps and fabric scraps to stuff them. I'm not going to try to I was going to pull a bit out and show you but I think I had better just leave it alone so what I'm doing with those is I'm getting all of the light colored ones that I have mainly um, and cutting them all up really 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 small as small as I can stand to cut it up and then I'm using that to stuff them and um, it you can kind of feel if you if you give it like a decent squeezed you can kind of feel a firmness there that I'm sure if you were using proper hobby fill type stuff um, I don't think it would be quite as firm as that but you are supposed to stuff these quite firmly as well and they are still soft and squishy so I, I think it will turn out fine and you know then those scraps aren't becoming waste which is always a good thing uh, to not contribute to more landfill and to reuse where possible so that's my progress on the uh the baby lamb pattern i have kind of put them on hold now for a while because i'm focusing on another project which i'll talk about in just a little bit um I this is for a newborn baby and I didn't start it until after they were born and yeah so there isn't really like a hard deadline for these anymore so that's that one there um for the same baby 
I have knit the Daniel's hat by Isolde Teague. I had knit this pattern before, but I wasn't able to show it to you at the end of last year because I gifted it immediately. That one I had done in a yellow and a cream, and this one is in um, blue and white. So it the, the blue and cream yarns that I started with are the Four Seasons Superwash Merino, which is a discontinued DK um, yarn that I got from Spotlight, which is our big box craft store here in Australia, one of them. So I was hoping I'd have enough, but I think, you know, in the back of my head, I think I knew that it really was not going to be enough, but I, I just figured I went for it anyway. And I, I knew I had other yarns in my stash that I could use. So, um, oh, I should also say that the, the color variation that you can see in it. So the four seasons are solid color yarns. And then the, um, lighter blues and the greens that you can see in there are actually um, a strand of mohair. So it's the Lincraft Winter Warmth Mohair, which is also a discontinued yarn. Um, but I held that throughout the whole thing. So no matter which color I was working with, I held the mohair with it. And I thought that would just be a really nice way to sort of um, uh, make make the yarns uh, work, just work a bit more fluidly together or something like that. So um, yeah, I'm really pleased with how that turned out. I did run out of the navy yarn first, but I am hoping, if I just hold it out again for you to see, I am hoping that you cannot tell where I started using a different yarn that is an extremely similar colorway. It is the Shadar, Shadar Click yarn, I believe, which is also a DK weight yarn, but it has acrylic content in it. So when I ran out of the Merino yarn, I just started using that. And I, I don't think the recipient or the recipient's parents, I should say, are going to be able to tell. The one that is more obvious is I ran out of the um, the cream colored uh, Four Seasons Merino. And let's see if I can find a good spot. You should be able to see because the yarn that I uh, replaced it with is again, another one from Spotlight. It is the Four Seasons Marvel Magic Stripe in, I think it's the bubbly colorway that I used and I picked, I didn't really have another, I I had, I had a white yarn in this Shadar click, um, but it was just too white. Um, I felt like it would have been a really obvious contrast um, from the original yarn that I was using. And then this uh, self-striping yarn, this colored yarn that I used was in really soft colors that had bl light blues and light greens in there. So my hope was that it would blend uh, more invisibly. And I, and I think that it did. If you look at it from a distance, I don't think you can really tell. But of course, if you look at it up close, let me stretch it a bit and show you that bit there. Can you kind of see how it's like that's white and then up there the white bits like light blue. I feel like it's more obvious in real life. But anyway, that has five different yarns in it. Um, and it being brioche, it's reversible. And so the transition from the, um, the rib to the brioche is neater 
on this side, this is the right side, but I actually quite like um, how the inside of it looks. I like the brightness of having the, um, the white yarn as the dominant color. So yes, so I, I, that didn't take me long to do. And then I thought I'd make a pom pom for it. I, I didn't want to use though, I didn't want to use the bubbly yarn colorway that I had used to replace the white at the top of the hat because it just wouldn't, the whole thing just wouldn't have matched as well. But I had some extra, some leftovers of that Marvel Magic Stripe yarn in a different colorway. I can't actually remember what this one is called, but I think it matches so well. Um, so it doesn't, it actually doesn't match quite as well with this side, but let me show it to you. I still think that's pretty good, right? And that, so that's another self-striping yarn. That is only that self-striping yarn. None of the yarn that's in this is in the pom-pom, but look how well that matches. And then I think it matches even better with the, with the wrong side, with the inside of it. And I just think that's just so perfect. I mean, the greens aren't an exact match for each other. I mean, not, nothing is an exact match, but it's so close. I think I'm just so pleased and impressed with how well those go together. So on this pom-pom, I have put a button. So they can just attach that to either, whoop, to either side, depending on, um, I've made the pom-pom a bit full and the hole a bit tight, but yeah, they'll be able to attach that to whichever side that they want to use or leave it off if they'd rather just have um, the little baby just wear the beanie. So I'm really pleased with how that one has come out. So uh, that is the Daniel's Hat by Isolde Teague. Um, I might one day actually make one for myself because they do have it in uh, from sizes baby right up through adult. So I might make that a third time. I really like that, that pattern. Um, their instructions, especially for the decreases are just done so well. So that's that one there. Let me pop that aside. Next up is, ah, yes. So I said that I've kind of put the baby lamb on hold because I want to focus on a, uh, a, on a different project. So my sister in London is pregnant. She's actually due today that this day that I'm filming, which is Sunday, the 27th of, oh my gosh, what month are we in? the 27th of February. She's due today. Um, haven't heard anything, so I assume she's still just waiting. But my parents have bought, um, have booked flights to go over there in two and a half weeks. Yikes, two and a half weeks. So I thought <laughs> I would try to see if I could make uh, the present for that baby in time for them to take uh, on their flight. If not, I mean, of course, that's totally fine. I had planned to ship um, this present plus a, a couple of other knitted items that I'm making for them um, and, and, and just pay for the shipping. But if I can send things over um, in their luggage uh, and save money, then obviously I would rather do that. So the blanket is, it's called... Um, I mentioned in the, I, I showed it in the previous episode, it's the Star Illusion Blanket by Katie Alquist. And I chose it because I'm interested in trying um, illusion knitting. So I can show it to you, but one of the, the comments um, for that I read of someone else who had made this pattern is that you kind of just have to trust the pattern and you just have to be really careful that you're following the chart and following the pattern exactly because it's kind of hard to see 
where you've made mistakes and it's hard to see the pattern. Um, so this, I'll show you what I've got so far. That. <laughs> so it kind of just looks like stripes. I mean, you can kind of see like in this, can you see how like the here and here, the dark stripes are kind of more prominent. And then in this bit here, the lighter stripes are more prominent, but you can't really make out what they are. So the idea of, of uh, the illusion knitting is that when you have it, oh, this is going to be so hard to show. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be able to show it, but you can kind of see when you, when you're looking at it on an angle, then that color dominance is more apparent and you're, you should be able to see what you're making. Oh gosh. Very difficult. Anyway, really hard to see what it's going to be. That's the back side of it. You can kind of also see it there without having to, you know, put it on an angle, but yeah. The colors that I have on at the moment aren't incredibly exciting. The brown isn't super exciting, but I am using gradient cakes for these. Um, so I'm using gradient cakes plus matching solid ends. I'm using the Sheep Yee's Whirl Fine Art Yarn and they have, uh, they match, the colorways match the Sheep Yee's Merino, what is it? Is it Merino Soft? Yeah, the, the Sheep Yee's Merino Soft yarns. So they're intentionally made to match each other so that you can get um, a color to match each end in case you just need a little bit extra, which is what I have done. Um, so that's the blue colorway there, which is my background color. So I haven't actually started using this cake because I'm use, I've started with one of the um, lighter colors that matches the outside of it. And then for uh, the contrast color, I've started using this cake here. So I've started from the center of that. Um, the cent the center color of this one didn't have a matching solid outer color. So, um, which I'm totally fine with because I like the yellows a lot better. So with the blue cake, I got one color of the, one extra color, one solid color of the inside and one solid color of the outside. And with this one, I got two solid colors of the outside. So, shake these well fine art and the um, matching merino soft and it's so soft this is 50% um, superwash merino 25% microfiber which I'm so interested in and which I'm sure lends to how incredibly soft this is um, and the other 25% is acrylic so it's it, it's it's a really interesting knit um yeah it's I have more trouble with it than I expected to just because how do I say this so you have quite longish sections where you're doing one type of stitch. So you've got more than, you've got say 15 knit stitches and then 15 purl stitches and then 15 knit stitches or something like that. And I just have, I don't know, I just get, I just get into the rhythm of it and I'll be counting my knit stitches, one, two, three, four, five. And I just get so into the rhythm that I start getting up to 20, 21, 22. And then I realize, oh, 
no, you were meant to switch to purl stitches like five stitches ago. So I, I'm constantly doing that. I'm knitting past where I'm supposed to change the stitch that I'm doing and having to tink back a little bit and then do it again. And I just keep doing that over and over and over again. And it's incredibly frustrating. Um, but, you know, I've got to get better at it or I've just got to deal with it because <laughs> I don't really have a choice. And yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Um, a couple of other things that I want to mention about it is I am using um, a row counter that I bought from Twill and Print who are in Canada, I believe. Um, so I bought a, a three of their enamel pin row counters last year. And for this project, I am using this Stay Cozy one, which is their um, winter edition. I'm using, I, I've chosen this one because um, the pattern is stars in the night sky. So I thought this was a really nice match for that. I, I like being able to match my, um, my notions to my knitting. Um, where I can. So I, I've i kind of also matched the stitch markers that I'm using to the project, but not in a very obvious way. For the, um, the start of the odd numbered rows, I do have one star stitch marker there that my um, crafty aunt made for me. And then all of the other stitch markers are Harry Potter ones that I got from Etsy. So I have chosen, um, <laughs> these aren't really an obvious match to the project because it's not the pattern that I am matching them to. Um, I'm matching them to the recipient. So like I said, these, this blanket is going to be for my um, sister's first baby. And she and I both love Harry Potter. So I've chosen them for that reason and I am using the villains of Harry Potter because uh, my sister has always liked the bad boys. Um, the most uh, distinct example I can remember from our childhood growing up is uh, in Greece she had a crush on Baby. Um, so she's she's always been drawn to um, the, the, the villains um, in in, in shows and things like that. So I've used the bad guys from Harry Potter as the stitch markers for, um, for this blanket here. And I'm getting that into a nice tangle. So I'll leave that there and I will move on. Before I continue to talk about um, other projects that I am working on, I do just wanna uh, give a brief little update on a couple of the vlogs that I mentioned in the previous episode that I've been watching. So I am still watching the Rosehip Island vlog, which is Hannah who is down in Tasmania. She is uh, a knitter and a yarn dyer. She has a yarn dyeing business. Um, and it's, it's quite, um, like I said in the previous episode, I have to watch things from the very beginning. So because Hannah had started her vlog a number of years ago, when, when I watch these ones that uh, are spanning quite a long period of time so that I can catch up, it's always really interesting to hear them talk about their lives and realize that you, you're watching them from when they had a one-year-old baby and now it's, five-year-old or something like that. It's just kind of really interesting to be along for the ride a little bit and like having their kids grow up in the background. It's kind of fun. Um, the, the other thing that, um, that I just thought I'd mention about uh, Hannah that I really like is, um, so there are a few vlogs that I watch and I haven't really come across any that have made the same things as me, which isn't a surprise at all. It's not something that I am expecting because there are just so many patterns out there. But 
um, so so it, it it was kind of fun that uh, that Hannah did actually make a couple of things that I well one thing that I had made and she's used yarn that I have used the yarn isn't um, as unique a match I guess especially watching all the uh, Aussie vlogs we are, we've all pretty much used yarn from the Bendigo Woolen Mills, but I guess because with Hannah, it was a yarn that's um, more unique that she had used for a sock project that I had also used for a sock project. Um, I, it just, it just gave me a nice little warm feeling inside to know that there are sort of experiences that we've shared so the sock pattern that I had made which was actually the first pair of socks I had ever made she also made a pair of these socks and they are the Skype or uh, Skip socks by Adrian Koo and I really like that pattern I'd, I'd actually be interested in making them again Adrian has a Skype socks pattern and a ribbed Skype socks pattern and I have made both of them and I would be interested in making both of them again because it was a really um, fun stitch to do. So it was nice that Hannah had made that sock and I felt a kind of sort of like connection with her because of that. And then last episode I realized when I was editing that I kept clearing my throat because I forgot that I had a drink right beside me that I could use to wet my throat so I'm making an effort to drink more while I'm filming this. Anyway, uh, the yarn that we had both used, which I believe is discontinued now, is the Lorna's Laces Soulmate and it has the fibre in it. I'm totally going to get this wrong but I think it's called Outlast and it's something that was actually developed I don't know if it was developed by NASA and for NASA but the con concept of it was that it it adapts to your body's needs and I have no idea how that works but I guess it's kind of like in the same way that people talk about wool I mean I know that wool is generally thought of something that's going to keep you warm but people do also talk about its breathability and that it's moisture wicking and all of that kind of stuff so I believe this outlast fiber it's meant to do something about um, keeping you it's it's good for keeping you warm when it's cold but it's also good for breathability and and keeping you cool or, or allow you to stay cool when it's hot. Um, so I'd sort of I'd heard about it from a po another podcast, and I hunted it down, and I found a skein, and I I made a pair of socks for um, my best friend who lives in Sydney. So yeah, so I had just used a plain white color to make the socks that I had made, um, which are the lingerie socks. And again, it's another pattern that I I think I'd like to make again for myself. Um, I said at the time when I finished making it that I, I think it was it's the prettiest thing that I have ever knit. And actually, I still think that's true. I still think it's the prettiest thing that I've ever made. And I'd like to make a pair for myself. So anyway, uh, Hannah used... I can't remember if she used just a variegated color or a self-striping color, but anyway, she used colors, but she has also used the Soulmate yarn, um, which you can't get anymore unless you find it in a D stash. So I thought that was another really nice thing to share. Um, the other thing that I wanted to sort of touch on, um, so last episode <clears throat> when I was talking about um, the Aussie vlogs that I had watched so far. Um, one of them was Fiberbound, who is uh, Alexandra, who is based in South Australia. I realized when I was editing that I kind of just mentioned it, her vlog, and then didn't really like talk about it. I don't, I, I don't know, maybe I was in a, in, I felt like I was in a rush or something, but I skipped over d discussing, um, her her vlog in more detail like I did with the other ones that I talked about. So one thing that I do want to say about 
her is that she just she just has a really sort of calming presence I find the way that she talks about things it's just really relaxing and comfortable and yeah calming like it's just very soothing and it was just really nice to watch yeah she knits a lot of socks um, she participates in a knit along that is a sock a month and on top of that she makes other socks uh, she also had a go of making uh, her own stitch markers using polymer clay and they were so cute they were really adorable um, so that was really fun to see but one other thing um, one thing that really struck me when I was watching hers was how many project bags she had and it seemed like she just kept accumulating more project bags and I've never really seen anyone who um, was that into project bags so I found it quite interesting and I, I don't have that many myself. I've never gone out and purchased a sp project bag specifically. Um, I have one here that my uh, crafty aunt had made for me as a knitting project bag. And it, there's a not notions pouch that um, it's not attached at the moment, but c it can go inside and kind of um, divides the bag into two different compartments. So if you're doing color work or, or if you just want to separate things inside it, it can be used for that. And it also has like two loops inside it for holding yarn. So keeping your yarn separate again, if you're doing color work or something like that. So that's actually the only project that bag I have that was specifically made for knitting. All of my other projects are pretty much just tote bags. Yes, but mainly, I use bowls. I use bowls because I mostly do my knitting at home. I don't, I don't often, I very rarely take my knitting out and about with me. So I often have them in bowls. So they're like, they're just easier to grab and go inside the house. I don't need to like open it up and start working with it. Not that that's hard. And, and I mean, really that does protect the contents better than just having an open bowl. Anyway, I digress. Um, I was really interested in how many project bags uh, Alexandra had. And uh, in the same way that I match, um, that I like to try to match my notions to my project, she matches her project bags to her project, which I thought was such a cool idea. And it makes me want to have more project bags so that may be something that I look out for um, when I go to the sheep and wool show and and I may just stop using random tote bags and what have you I mean most of the tote bags I, I don't have many um, but the they're generally from yarn stores when I've bought yarn and they've put um, they've put uh, the yarn in bag well I mean you have to buy the tote bag but my my favorite one is one that I've kind of um displayed in the background on um previous episodes <clears throat> when I haven't had other things to display I think it's one that says something like I'm not a yarn hoarder um I'm the curator of an extensive <clears throat> fiber yarn collection or something like that a quote along those lines and that was from one of my local yarn stores which is called crafty cottage um so yes i quite i quite like that one but i have a couple others that are from uh yarn stores and then i do have a couple of other tote bags that i may show them to you sometime that i got from other various things that i just thought were nice they weren't just ordinary tote bags um, I'll, I'll show you them to you some other time because I haven't pulled them out now and I'm wary that I am just talking and talking and talking. Anyway, um, so I decided as well that um, being inspired by all of Alexandra's project bags, I decided I would 
make my own. So I have a few um, sewing bag. So I have a few project bag uh, ideas that I want to sew, patterns and ideas that I want to sew. But there is also um, a bag basket tote type thing in this issue of making, which is um, making number five color. Um, and this was was already actually in my queue. It was already something that I was interested in working with. So I thought, well, since I want bags, I'm gonna take this opportunity to uh, make it. So this is the bag here. It is by Cal Patch. It's called, um, it's called the box set bag. And I really love how they've used color in it, how they've, um, stopped and changed and mixed and matched colors and it's not all just solid however i am not i don't feel quite creative enough in my crochet to do that and i didn't want to have to weave in that many different um where have i put it that many different colors so i'm i'm not doing that so the whole thing is made using two strands of yarn held together um and the idea is that sometimes you're just holding two strands of the main color and sometimes you're holding a strand of the main color with a contrast color and you know you change it up as you go um anyway like i said i don't i can't be bothered with changing it up so i am kind of just doing each panel so it's knit in panels and then um it's going to be crocheted together so i'm doing each panel in a different color so i have um in my stash before I really knew anything about yarn and fiber content and, and that kind of stuff. And when I was still pretty new, I went to a trash and treasure market where someone was getting rid of a whole lot of yarn, um, which included some of some um, rug wool. And then it also had some um some i don't i don't have any of the labels here oh this one's another rug wool but it also had some that didn't have labels on it or i think it had just handwritten labels that were like plant craft cottage rgb rbg <laughs> or something like that and i did a bit of googling and from what i could ascertain it is the royal botanic gardens plant craft cottage where they had classes in i think it was natural dyeing um so i think most of what i have left is the rug wool and i never knew what to do with it because it's too rough for next to skin it's far too rough for that um, but then it occurred to me that i could use it for this bag. So um, I have started doing that. So the pattern calls for two strands of worsted weight yarn held together and worked with a six millimeter crochet hook. Um, I don't have a six millimeter crochet hook. I have 5.5 and then I have eight. And I did do a, a little bit of a swatch in both of those sizes. And while the one on the 5.5 was really nice and firm i actually like the um the feel the texture better on the eight millimeter crochet hook so that is what i am using so the first panel that i made is um this one is going to be the bottom of the bag um so i should say um i don't think i can't recall that this yarn had information about gauge on it but i did you know wrap it around a ruler and see how many wraps per inch i was getting and there um it, it comes out to a dk weight so i'm using a finer yarn on a bigger crochet hook um but i'm not finding that it's really like loose and holy like it still feels pretty solid to me plus i might try um felting it when it's done too we shall see so that anyway that's the bottom panel um like i have said many many times i am not that into pink so i have used the pink color on the bottom panel because it's the one that i'm not really 
going to see or it's the one that I'm going to see the least of. Um, the main color that I'm using is the brown because that is the one that I had the most of. I had four skeins of that. I think I had Was it just one skein? Yeah, just one skein of the pink and I do still have some of the pink left over so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. So I finished the bottom panel and I have finished one of the narrow, uh, one of the end panels, so one of the narrower side panels. So that is that one there. And the interesting thing is, even though I'm not that into pink, when I was working on this, I was thinking, oh, it actually looks so pretty and so lovely and so nice. But then I started knitting this one and I was like, oh yes, oh, I love how vibrant it is. And I just thought it was so much prettier than the pink. And that just goes to show I am really more into the cooler colors than the warmer colors. So this is um, a lovely bright blue. So I, there were about one and a half skeins of this. Um, so I have made one end panel and I've only just made the smallest start of the second. So yes, so the two end panels are going to be blue. And again, I'm certain that I'm going to have leftovers of the blue yarn. Um, I have three skeins of this yellow. So they are going to be the wider side panels, the ones with the handles on them. I'm pretty sure three skeins will cover me, but if not, or if I run out of the brown, which is the main color, I have one final color, which is this gray here. So I will use that somehow if I need to, and if not, then I've just got that for something else. Um, the last thing that I want to mention about this crochet project is my crafty aunt. Um, gave me this ring quite a long time ago. So it is for tensioning your yarn and it's for crochet. Um, so what I, I find it so handy when, when I've crocheted in the past, I've always been really scared of, um, losing the last stitch that I made. Um, because of if you know if the hook slips out of it and it pulls through it's just I yeah you know I usually I think I just stuck the hook into the work but then sometimes the loop would still slide off it and then I'd lose where I was um anyway I, I find it actually a really handy use of the ring to just slip it on the end there and that's just not going to come off but really um when you work with it you kind of have it on your finger. So this one is kind of on the inside, inside. <laughs> and, um, you, it like, you can adjust it so you can, you know, squeeze it smaller or stretch it out a little bit. And you have the yarn. Um, I, I still haven't completely quite got the hang of it. Um, you have, you have, the yarn, this is really hard. There, I'm just gonna twist it around more. There we go, and then it's not in the right spot. Sorry, this is harder to show than I had expected it would be. I'm trying to cover my face. There we go. Okay, that's the, that's the best you're gonna get. Sorry about all of that. Um, but yeah, you, you, um, you have the yarn tensioned around the neck of the swan. Um, it's a bit fiddly to use, um, and you can you can have the other end of the yarn wrapped around the tail or just loose or I don't know. I haven't quite got it, and I, and I don't. I have a couple of. Um, I have a couple of these type of rings for knitting as well and I don't really use them because I just feel like I don't have the same amount of control as when the yarn is running over my fingers and I can feel it. Um, 
yeah, I just feel like I can't control it as well when I'm using the knitting rings. And this is kind of the same, but because this yarn is so rough, I actually am preferring to use the ring just because I don't have it, you know, coming over all my fingers and pulling through. I kind of just have it over the swan neck and I'm just holding it loosely in my other hands. And that, that works fine for crochet and for this yarn. So, oh no, I've nearly lost my loop. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my crochet project. Um, the other thing that I'm super duper, super really excited to share with you is my yarn. Where did I put it? So last episode, it was either last episode or the previous episode, I showed you that um, I've had a go of spinning on my Turkish spindle that my uncle 3D printed for me. Um, so I did, since I showed you that, I did, um, there it is. I did make a third spin, uh, I did spin a third single and then I plied them together. So I wanted three ply yarn just because I like the characteristics of that better than a two ply. Um, it was a bit fiddly holding the three um, little tiny cakes in my hand um, to, to do the plying, but it was really fun and satisfying and seeing the result was just such a thrill. Um, I just can't, oh, I, I think I'm really going to like spinning. Um, I think the, the, the spindle that I've got at the moment isn't great. Um, it's fine for beginning and practicing, but I do, that's definitely something that I want to look out for at the sheep and will show is a, is a nice wooden Turkish spindle. But anyway, um, so I plied the three yarns together. I wound it on, um, onto my Swift here. So what I actually did was I got a tape measure and I, um, I put a clip around it so that it was making a loop that was one meter. And then I pulled this out so that, um, it was giving me that, um, one meter circumference. And then I, um, wound the yarn that I had plied around it. Um, and that way I was able to know how long, um, a bit of yarn I had made. It was nine and a half meters. So I did that. I tied it in four different places. Um, and then I put it in a bowl of water to soak for about 15, 20 minutes. And then I pulled it out, gave it a gentle squeeze to get all the excess water out and hung it up. And I've made yarn. It's so exciting. And it's actually like, it's come out so much better than I had expected. It's just really exciting. Um, I just, so let me undo this uh, little skein. So that's my first skein of hand spun yarn. And I have um, put this into my um, hand spinning projects in Ravelry, which was really exciting to do. There are like, I mean, most of it, as you can see, is quite fluffy, but there are some bits that are kind of more like, I guess, what I would like to aim for, I think. Um, let me see if I can... How can I show this to you? I think I need to like hide my face. Can you see that? Anyway, um, there are some bits of it that are better than others, of course. Um, but you know, this is just my first time. I'm bound to get better with more and more practice and I have plenty to practice with. Um, like I said, I had bought this <clears throat> roving to make a chunky, super chunky blanket 
and I bought way too much. I made two blankets out of it, which I gifted. And I've actually got like, I weighed it the other day. I've got 2.3 kilos. So I have a lot of roving to play with. Again, not the best quality, but fine for um, a beginner. And um, it's just, it's exciting. Yarn, I made yarn. Yeah, so super happy about that um, and very keen to make make more and get better so I have um, I've skeined that really badly but that's all right so the thing that I can't decide with this is I mean I'll probably just leave it in the skein for a while but I can't decide if I want to knit a swatch and have it as a keepsake in swatch form or the other idea which my um, crochet friend Hannah really likes is I kind of want to do a little weaving project where in a year every yarn that I spin I'll put a little bit of it into a weaving project so that I have you know, a, a, a woven item that is, that kind of shows my progression of all the yarns that I make. And I kind of like that idea, but I also kind of want to see how it knits up. So I'm not really sure what to do. What do you think? What would you do? What do you think? I just, I don't want to leave it in skein form indefinitely because I want to see what it's like to work with it. I don't know. I really want to see how it looks knitted up and I want to like feel, I want to feel how it knits up. But I think a weaving project would be quite pretty. Maybe I'll save the weaving project for when I'm better and I'm doing more exciting things. And then I can have, you know, projects that I've made out of my hand spun. And then also, um, a, a a woven thing that shows them all and maybe I'll knit this up I might do that yeah but you know let me know in the comments um which which one you like or if you have another idea of how I can use and and document um my hand spun so that one is that one there um the last multi-crafty project that I'll just mention I don't really want to talk about it because it's nothing to do with wool um and yarn and knitting um but it is this top that i am wearing so i did mention it on a previous top that i um was in the middle of sewing this aster pattern which is from same work so i'll stand up a bit so let's see it's a bit awkward got a nice pleat in the back which i'm not sure you saw because i'm spinning around but um yes so that is the Aster top. It's not really my colors, but I still think it's quite nice. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of having made this. So yeah, that's my sewing project. And it, it is a little bit on the loose side. If I make it again, which I'm not sure that I will, I might go down a size, but who knows? We'll see. So that is the sewing project. Um, Oh gosh, I did want to have a little bit of a craft for thought chat, but I'll try to keep it brief because this has this episode has gone on for quite a bit already. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, I part, when I first started this vlog, one of the reasons that I said that I did it was because I want to try designing my own knitwear, and I thought that having a vlog would sort of push me to do that, and it didn't. And towards the end of last year, I started saying to myself, well, why do I want to design really? There are so many lovely patterns out there. There are so many amazing designers. Do I really want to add to, do I want to add to that pool? And especially if I wasn't really inspired, like, do I want to try to force myself to come up with design ideas when I wasn't having them? And I was sort of giving up on the idea. And then my knitting friend, Hannah, who I'm talking about quite a bit in this episode, um, made me 
where she gave me this beautiful tea cozy that she had made, that she had crocheted. She gave it to me for Christmas last year. And she told me that she was going to give it to me. So I thought, oh, I have to make her something. I have to knit her something in exchange. Um, so since she has given me a practical uh, kitchen item, I wanted to do the same for her. So I decided that I'd make her oven mitts or an oven mitt. Um, and then I wasn't finding one that was exactly what I wanted um, on Ravelry. So I decided that I would design my own. The idea that I had was to, um, sorry, I think some of the fiber from my spinning got in my eye, but my idea was to try to do a fabric that was thick so that it wouldn't need to be lined. So I came up with an idea. I did all of this swatching with acrylic yarn. Um, she, she's vegan, so I wasn't going to use wool anyway, but I just did swatching with acrylic yarn, um, just to play with the stitch pattern and the idea that I had and to figure out numbers. Um, and that was all working. And then I made it for her in the yarn that I wanted to use. And I bought this online, so I had no idea what it was like in real life. And the yarn was just ropier than I had hoped for. So I wanted to use something that was 100% cotton. And I have worked with cotton before that's like fluff, like fluffier. It's kind of like acrylic yarns that you get, like it's got airiness to it. And this one was kind of just more like cord, but I still really liked it and I still really wanted to use it. So I just went ahead with it and I did it and as you can see, it didn't quite turn out all that great. The shape is completely off. Um, I don't have it here because I gave it to her yesterday. And then I ended up having to line it because when I tried, when I tested it out in the kitchen, um, I mean, I could take something out of the oven, but I had to put it down straight away. It wasn't as heat resistant as I would have liked. Um, since then, I have done another swatch and sort of I'm working on changes to the design to get a better shape but I've done another swatch using wool yarn and I have tested that and I was able to hold something fresh out of the oven for quite a long time and I just put it down because I was like well, I'm never going to hold anything out of the oven for this long but I could have just kept holding on to it indefinitely it feels like um, and without any lining so I do think um, this is a pattern that I'm going to want to develop and then at the start of this year while I was watching Hohi's journal which is uh, the designer Hohi Locatelli's um, vlog she showed a sock pattern which just had the, the tiniest little bit of like a zigzag or something to it and and I suddenly like had ideas of of a, a, a pattern that I could do um, and I you know did some sketches and all of a sudden I was inspired and I was I had this idea in my head um, this is the first absolutely terrible swatch that I did just to try to like play with um just to try to figure out if what I wanted to do would work and some of it did some of it didn't um, but this was enough to sort of help me uh, figure out and see what was working, what wasn't working, and what I could incorporate into the pattern and how I could make the pattern work. So I wrote up uh, another chart and I have started making this other swatch for it, which is working so well. And I'm really excited to write this up into a pattern. So I've kind of done this in three different panels that are slightly different. So that's one, that's one, and that's one. They're all just slightly different from each other the way the stitches are done. And I kind of did this size because I was, I had the idea that um, once I'm done with the swatch, I can just turn it into, I've got, I've got a um, clip at the back of my head, so it's not really gonna fit right, but I figured, you know, I could turn it into a beanie once it was done and it wouldn't just have to stay as a swatch. But 
<laughs> we'll see. I still have like another section to do, so it's going to be an odd long beanie, but not quite loose enough to be called a slouchy beanie. What was that? Oh, a stitch marker fell off. Um, and a stitch. Oh no. Let me just fix that. Oh, can't drop stitches. All right, it was just the one, so that was lucky. Get my stitch marker back on. Um, yeah, anyway, so, so that I'm really excited about making this pattern. Um, and I do want to get this pattern out before I do the mitten pattern because I'm more excited about this and I want this to be my debut pattern on Ravelry. So I'm really super excited about that. Um, anyway, that's all I'll say about that because I, I should start wrapping up. Um, just a quick little stat chat. Um, so I found it really interesting. Last year I was really a monogamous knitter. Um, I really only ever worked on one project at a time and I get so into it that I just couldn't even think about another project until it was completely finished. And this year started off that way as well, especially with that August sock cow where I was making the five socks because I was so keen to see the result and be able to compare all five socks. So um, since that has finished, I've found it really interesting that um, I, I've moved back to being a, I don't know if what you would call it, but I'm, I'm just, I'm not monogamous anymore and I found that really interesting. So at the moment I have four knits on the go. So the Star Illusion blanket, the Baby Lamb. Do I have four? Do I only have three? I have, um, I'm knitting up a little bit of a sweater surgery thing for um, a sweater. I just need to make the front of it longer. So I'm working on that. Oh, do I actually, I might, oh, the swatch, the design swatch, obviously I'm counting that as one. So that's four knits. I've got one crochet project on the go. Um, I have two needlework items that I am working on. One is the cross stitch um, that I showed in the first episode for this year. And another one is just a really simple hand quilty inspired kind of project that I haven't shown you yet and I may one day. So two needlework type projects and then one sewing project, which technically I don't know that I'd count that as something that I'm currently working on. I started it last year and then I put it aside and I've just, since I finished this top, I've taken it out of the cupboard and I'm going to start work on it but I'll count it. So that's eight different projects on the go, which is quite a change from just one at a time last year. Um, and it does, um, I'm sure that the, it's, it's, it's definitely got to do with, I mean, me being more multi-crafty this year definitely has a lot to do with that. Um, and I'm not counting a spinning project because this one's done and I haven't started the next spin. But yeah, eight projects on the go from one, maybe two patterns on the go at a time last year. Yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. Um, so since I've mentioned spinning, even though I'm not doing anything at the moment, um, I do want to say that the thing that I am grateful for um, in the past couple of weeks, the thing that I am most grateful for is just, so YouTube, YouTube in general, for tutorials and how to's and things like that, but especially Gillian Eve's channel. Gillian Eve is a spinner who also knits and does other crafts, but is mainly a spinner. And I, she's just really great to watch. She's really warm and um, friendly and happy and um, just she's just a joy to watch and to listen to and she has a lot of knowledge uh, and she you know explores lots of things within spinning and I, I I search through her channel first when I'm trying to find something on spinning and I've just found her really great um, just for watching and as uh, as a 
teacher, I guess. So um, the Gillian, Gillian Eve um, has, has been really great for my spinning journey. And if I ever get through all of the knitting vlogs that I want to watch, um, I definitely want to go through and watch her vlog from start to finish as well. So, oh gosh, I, I felt like I rushed through everything a little bit because um, I knew I had a lot to get through. So hopefully that wasn't too much of a, of a gallop for you and it, and it was all okay. Um, but that brings us to the end of it now. Uh, if you're still watching, thank you so much for staying through right to the end. Um, I really appreciate you spending your time with me. Um, I, I really like having this time to sit down and share my knitting and crafty adventures. So I hope you've enjoyed it too. Um, if you have, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and I'd also really love it if you subscribed to my uh, channel, my Platypus Knitting channel, so that more people can find me. Um, and I'd also really appreciate any comments um, on this video as well. I, I'd love to know who you are um, and just any feedback that you might have on my vlogs. So yeah, um, that would be lovely. You can also find me on Instagram at Platypus Knitting and I am on Ravelry under my own name, Bobby Ollen. I don't actually know if I introduced myself at the start of this. Let's hope I did. I'm Bobby Ollen. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's my username on Ravelry and I look forward to catching up with you again in another fortnight. Thanks for watching. Fare thee well!